rock. Uh, uh, nice to meet you, Sue. Same to uh, you, thank you. Yeah. How have you been doing then? Awesome, dude. We're in England, so fucking great. I can say fuck, right? Yeah, go right ahead. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. No, nah, it's great, man. It, it's so good to be in England, and uh, I think that's why Amelia moved here, is, is that we just love this place. Yeah. And English know how to rock because, you know, it's, um, yeah, it's awesome. And yeah. um, up till uh, last year, Angel Spit, uh, that kind of was, uh, Angel Spit was uh, obviously a duo. Yeah. Um, with the uh, addition of three new members, you feel that the band's sound has been enhanced. Yeah. Um, what's really cool about having all members on board is that we've always had the, we always start from the point of live rock and roll. That's, it, the whole thing is about synthesizers with, with a punk rock attitude. And now that we have Matt on drums and George on guitar, we let the machines do what machines do, which is be perfect. And we have a human element over the top that's just insanity. It's really funny, like, I, when it was just me and Amelia, it was like, oh my God, we have to do everything and go crazy. But now it's like, it's just awesome. It obliterates. And it's funny because in the rehearsals, I'm, if anything, because Matt and George are amazing players, I will always say to them, you don't have to play at that. It's not EG, EG, it's fuck you, motherfucker. You know, just pound the fuck out of it. Yeah. And um, you mentioned that earlier uh, that Amelia's obviously moved over here to the UK. Uh, and obviously, you're all living in the States or in New York. Uh, with the band, you know, you split in different countries. Uh, do you find it more challenging when it comes to um, band related work such as recording or Not promotion? really. In fact, um, it works in our favour because Amelia is a night owl and I'm a morning owl. And I I usually get up at like 7 o'clock in the morning. And 7 o'clock in the morning is like in New York is like 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in London. And that's when she's getting up. <laughs> so yeah. it, it works fine. Like we Skype a couple of times a week and just keep it rolling that way. Yeah. And um, obviously you do a, a lot of work in regards to Angel Spit, songwriting, promotion, networking. Um, you know, what's a typical day um, for you when it comes to Angel Spit? I will get up at seven o'clock in the morning. I will make a hellish coffee with lots of chocolate because mocha's rule. And I really love England because I can say mocha and that no care. Um, and then from about 8 o'clock to maybe 12, I just answer emails and deal with um, really boring shit like um, administration and all that crap. Yeah. Then I turn off my email and um, get out of the house for half an hour um, just to walk out of the house, come back in and I will usually uh, do something that is order or merch or design related. And I'll do that for like two hours, get out of the house again, come back and do music for three, four hours, then make dinner, um, then do another block of about three hours. Usually, um, sometimes a little bit more emails, but usually it's, um, it's ongoing creative administration. Because you know when you write a song or you're doing, you got to work on lyrics and there's, there's not so glamorous stuff involved with yeah. design. The trick is you've got to have blocks and they've got to be divided by getting out of the house or eating. You will achieve anything. Yeah. And when you uh, decided on the band's name, Angel Spit, uh, were you trying to uh, portray a, a certain image or concept with the name? We stole it from Sonic Youth. They have a song called Orange Rolls Angel Spit, which is one of Amelia's favorite tracks. Great track. And um, yeah, we just stole it. It's such a cool name, so god damn it, that's gonna be a band name. Yeah, I could agree with you on that one. Um, obviously, uh, you do a lot of the writing for Angels, but uh, do you feel that like, any of your own personal beliefs or philosophies uh, influence the band's music? Yes, but I try not to be. I try not to write music that is, I think this. Um, lyrical inspiration for me comes from watching other people and from having conversations. That's why when we do a gig, we're always out shaking people's hands and like, you know, if, if kids have tattoos or designs or t-shirts, Amelia is taking note of what their uh, artistic preference is. If I'm having a conversation with people, I'm taking all that on board and it's, I'm trying to always make 
music and lyrics and all of us were trying to build something that is relevant right here right now to every single person and we don't see ourselves as anything like that it's we're just one of the voices in the ocean yeah and and what we think is um we try and lace a lot of political and personal meaning yeah uh in with creative imagery and stuff like that that's why we'll always um, talk about cannibalism and god we're yeah. not for or anti-cannibalism or god it's just that they're very evocative things yeah and um, well, speaking of like uh, political meanings and stuff, um, are there any underlying concepts with the new now? Uh, with the new album, uh, "Hello, My Name Is." Yes, "Hello, My Name Is." I wrote in New York over the winter, and there's a cafe on the corner. I used to live. I moved out of New York, but I used to live in the funkiest in um, East Village. It was so cool, and there's a cafe on the corner of um, 2nd Avenue and St. Mark's and I would, a 3rd Avenue, and I would sit in that cafe from about 7am to about 9am and I would watch peak hour people going to work. Every single one of them it was the same thing, they had the same look on their face, they were taking the same route to work, going into the same Starbucks, having the same coffee, getting on the same train, seeing the same people, getting off at the same place. I'm um, going up the same flight of stairs, going through that office door, sitting at the door, and just routine, 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 routine. Um, and I made the realization that we are so fucking dead as a species. And the Wall Street Massacre tour we're doing right now, and Hello My Name Is, it all has an underlying corporate theme. It is not about the 99%, 1%, although that is an important thing. Unfortunately, in the world with human nature, people will always be rich and there will always be poor people. Um, the thing that, that we think is more important is how do you retain your humanity in a non, in a dehumanized world where you are being fed all of this shit, iPhones, new iPhones, apps, blah, 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 blah. You need more download, you need all of this crap. And you're getting into debt, and the only way you can pay that debt on, off is by working in a job that is destroying your fucking soul. We are all in that position, every single one of us. And the question is, how do you retain your humanity? How do you stay creative? How do you stay alive? And that's what we're exploring. Mm. Interesting concept. Um, Angel Spitz Music Spoon Street has described as um, things as far fetched as. Um, Electro goth pop to uh, more subtle uh, genres like cyberpunk and industrial. How would you describe the band's music? Electro ballistic punk. Sounds interesting. Yeah, well, our biggest influences are Henry Rollins, Sonic Youth, Placebo, Skinny Puppies, um, Jane's Addiction. You've got to hear the new Jane's Addiction album. Fucking phenomenal. Um, mixed with Prodigy, Nine Inch Nails, all that shit, um, with the explosive thought and, and concept of survival research laboratories, Atari Teenage Riot, all that stuff, like that's the mismatch that formed Angel Spit, and that fist in the air, fuck yeah thing, that, that's what this band is all about, yeah. and yeah, and it's an, actually another really important thing as well is that we don't have the solution. Um, we can't really even define the problem, but what we do know is that we are in this together. And that is the most important thing. And I think people who are into Angel Spit, that's what they understand is that everybody there at the gig, we're all in the same place together. Yeah. And um, going back to uh, uh, the new album, uh, Hello My Name Is, uh, do you feel it's um, different compared to previous releases such as uh, Blood, Death, Ivory or is it Crown Cause? Crown Cause. Yeah. What we tried to do with this album is to make it as rock as possible. That the whole ethos behind the album is this album is going to be played live. So the the brief with the like I listened to a whole bunch of old Bowie and old um, Iggy Pop and seventies music, uh, Steely Dan, um, Fleetwood Mac, everything where the drummer was out of time and he basically sounded like this wild man on drums. And I want that. I like that. I want that on the record. I want really strict machines clock around, banging the shit out of it, but I want a crazy motherfucker up the back going crazy. 
I also love the sound of guitars where it's, um, I have two really huge guitar influences, Ramstein. Great big wall of guitars. Yeah. Really finely edited, like mathematically. The other one is Sonic Youth, where the guitars are messy and Lee Ronaldo is so good. Fucking I love those guys. Crazy tunings, crazy and it's just ah so whenever we do guitars, it's there will be one Ramstein guitar in there and a, a big Sonic Youth guitar. And you know, I have I've gone way off the question now, but basically um Henry Rollins, the guy is God, yeah. and I um, I try and do something all the time that carries the flag of that 90s punk rock that I, I won't let it die. So I forgot the question, but the answer is yes. <laughs> um, what song do you feel defines Angel Spit as a whole? Crap. That's good. Jugular of Blood Death Ivory. Yeah. If not that one, then maybe Static. Or maybe Catatonic, actually, off the new album. Probably Catatonic. Maybe even Violence off the new album. I'll go with Violence. Violence is, is um, my favorite track that we've ever done. And it is gruelingly, brutally, pulverizingly heavy, yet beautiful. And that is something musically that we're always trying to hit. It's that that moment of oh my god that is so beautifully terrifying I'd say violence but then if you listen to something like Vina Carver or Dead Letter or Meat or all the other shit it's like it's so, it's insane. maybe I'll say catatonic same reason no violence um, speaking of your music um, if you could replace the soundtrack to any movie with your own music which one would it be and why? Maybe Blade Runner, but maybe Run Lola Run. Um, oh, dude, you should have emailed me these questions. They're great. I gotta think about this. Um, possibly Pi. I don't know. Um. Akira. Possibly Akira. The original 1988 version. Yeah. I could have given a better answer just then. I just don't know why it is. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and now, that's such a good question. That is a great question because it's like visuals to us are so important. Yeah. And maybe, um, Something, uh, who's the crazy guy from Monty Python? I can't think of his name, I should have killed. Oh, God. I can't. You know, the guy, the, the, the video, the, the dude, maybe 12 monkeys. No, I don't know. I think I know what you mean. Fight that. Club. We do Fight Club. Fight Club. Bang. David Fincher, shit yeah. Fight Club. Actually, I could picture uh, all your music in Fight Club. Yeah, yeah. Just I fight A Abraham Lincoln. Thoughts are all about Angel Spit. Do not talk about no, no, actually talk about it. Go on. And um, over the past couple of years, you've um, run into some uh, bad luck regarding UK tours, like ha. like uh, 2010. Holy um, shit! With the uh, with the fucking volcano. <laughs> exactly. Last year with the riots. This yeah. year the van exploded. Uh, now you know that when we came over this time, the entire computer network of and United America Airlines shut down. Shut down. Yeah. Um. So we lost all of our gear for like two days and we were going, we had planned out, um, cause the three of us boys, and Amelia, Amelia's a fucking good pro problem solver, but the three of us are very mathematical and we'd figure out how we were gonna do the whole tour with nothing. All right, it's the four horsemen of the apocalypse that come and kill us. Oh, I was hoping to get some loaded before we Yeah, no, 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 we'll, we'll, we're, we're, we're playing for them tonight. Didn't you hear? No. That was the other one. Yeah, riots, volcanoes, Locus. Oh my god, we're the Antichrist. Makes perfect sense. It does, right? I explain why God hates you guys. Yeah, God so fucking much. hates us so much. God like 
Uh, the van exploded in Prague, an hour out of Prague. Oh, fucking hell, must have been a nightmare. Yeah, well, it was, what was lucky is that um, the van place is from Prague. Prague is, God, that's a beautiful city, but the van exploded. An hour out, 90 minutes later, we were in the new van going. The venue that day, we walked on stage to a festival, did the gig. Yeah. Um, no makeup, we just walked on and did it. It was so much fun, in hindsight. I don't know, man. I think the Nordic Gods or something hates our band and they don't want us here. Well, I wouldn't say so much the Nordic Gods. I mean, Maybe uh, just God in general, I don't know. Yeah. Well, could be uh, the Roman Gods or someone like that. Doesn't necessarily have to be the Norse one. Britannia hates us. <laughs> well, well her, her children of evil rebel. Yeah. Uh, so as I was trying to ask you, yeah, and um, how is it that you're able to stay, you know, calm under, you know, situation? I'm not calm ever. You've been fooled, man. Ask the band. I'm the most least calmest human being you've met in your whole fucking life. I'm I'm a stress head. Oh, no. yes, you are. Amelia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. There you go. Just okay. That, that's all. That's all. Um, no, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm quite a stress head. I like being organized because it helps me deal with my stress. You know, all this anal retentive bullshit I do every morning, I have to be doing these things. Yeah. It's, like, it keeps my, this is a problem a lot of boys have, is it's fight or flee. And the big, bad, scary world is, is making guys go all of this adrenaline because what, this big threat, do you fight it or do you flee it? Fight it, and if he's kicking your ass, then you better change your strategy or just fuck off, really. But nevertheless, the outcome of it is dormant adrenaline in your system, and that results in this thing, this bomb, going off and going off and going off and going off, and that relates in stress and all of this other shit. You've got that's the whole problem is that we're, we're being threatened by something, and our primitive uh, programming is setting off this nerve bomb inside everyone. And all you have to do is just click the button and they pop. Come on in. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, and Uber bye. Uh, Kill him. I'll okay, this try. Um, so that's the um, yeah, that's that's a side rant. That's that's the problem with our species. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, final question then. Oh, how do I stay? Uh, um, those guys take care. <laughs> I set up the problems. I attract the problems, they fix it. Like, get that square, that's, that's the... And it's always funny, every single gig's like that. Like, it's every crazy, crazy, crazy going on stage and then everyone's... Then you do the gig, it's, it's fun. Nice too short, ain't it? Exactly. And a final question. Uh, a lot of our readers are um, in, uh, musicians and are in bands. Um, what wisdom uh, would you impart, you know, on them to help them uh, grow and, you know, get to the same level of success as Angel Spit? Persist. I am probably the most mediocre composer. I can't speak for Amelia because Amelia is a fucking good designer and she just does stuff once and it's incredible. I, on the other hand, I am very, very, very mediocre. Um, I have amazing shit because I work so hard at it and I persist and I don't stop and I try and draw on as many influences as I, as I possibly can like for example at the moment I'm listening to Bootsy Collins, Stevie Wonder um, a whole bunch of music I was brought up with when I was a kid and I hated it but I want to go back to it and I want to find out why and there's no reason because Stevie Wonder, Bootsy Collins, George Clinton it's so good it's so good, P-Funk man, holy shit, James Brown, come on. Um, I try and listen to music that normally I wouldn't listen to. Everybody has something to, say, to teach you, every song has something to inspire you. Don't piss in the gene pool. Don't breed with the gene pool. If you write EBM, do not listen to EBM. If you write metal, don't listen to metal. Um, you know, if that's something I love, for example, Masuka. Those guys are going to funk. There is funk in their music. It's not just, it's like, yeah. Um, and that shit makes it richer. And um, I will relay my favorite story in the world, which sums the whole thing up. It's China, 500 AD. 
and the Emperor has this thing about the fire horse. The fire horse is one of those crazy carvings made out of stone or wood or mahogany or whatever, and it's alive. And the Emperor loved these things, and he surrounded the, 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 the uh, palace with these fire horses. And one day he bought the master uh, sculptor in front, of the, in front of him, and he said, how do you do this? How do you make these incredible statues? And the master sculptor, the master said, the ninja, the Jedi, said, I start with a piece of wood or stone that has a fire horse inside it. Then I sculpt away everything that doesn't look like a fire horse. And that is something I remember every single time I'm making music or doing art or whatever the fuck it is I'm doing is that the, uh, there is an amazing song. It doesn't matter how weird or random the idea is, there is an incredible song inside that ball of crazy confusion. All you have to do is edit and edit and edit and cut and slash and find it. And then once you have that golden orb, you just build on it. Persistence and believe in yourself. And I think for English and Australians and Irish and Scottish, that's a hard thing to do because you're taught from a young age that you're shit. And don't, the tall, tall poppies things, fucking hell. Like, that's just, that's what I love about America is they don't have that concept in America. Like, tall, tall, like same with Germany, it doesn't exist. Um, so drop it right now. If your friends and your family want to be like that, that's their problem. It's not yours. You're fucking awesome. You know, don't listen to anyone else who says otherwise because most likely they're wearing a suit and tie, have a crap marriage, have a crap life and hate their life and hate their job. Fuck them. And you can have all those things too, but like your life. And make music on the side. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> Thanks for your time. Thank you. Good. Uh, good luck with your shots tonight. Yeah, it's going to rock. Yep. All right, thank you.